Nope, Valdez, nobody's coming to save you. It's time to make a decision. Welcome to hell. <laughs> now look, we've all been in a spot like this. A spot that you know is a setup, but you know you just can't fold. I'm just not sure if y'all face be stuck like this for 20 seconds like mine was. But hey, every session can't be a sun run. Let's see how I navigate through these muddy waters with tough spots all night. Let's get to it. Holy shit. Holy shit. So we're back at the hangar. I have a small request. If you've seen my vlogs before and you love the quality and you love the content, so my current sub count is this. If you like my content and you appreciate the quality that I'm putting forth for you guys, please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate the support. I appreciate you guys rocking with me. Let's get to this action. Y'all already know what time it is. I'm buying in for $500. Let's run good. My family. They said you got fifth place or something. Yeah, I went on West Ham. Let's get into the first interesting hand of the night when we look down at King Queen of Clubs in the small blind. There's a $6 straddle on the button, and with us being first to act, I decide to raise it up to $25. Three players call, now let's go four ways to a flop. The flop comes queen, eight, eight, rainbow. And I lead on this board for $45. Under the gun is the only caller and we go heads up to a turn. 45 is the bet. Heads up. Now the turn is the nine of spades. And it's time for me to have a heart to heart with you guys and just be honest. I normally try to give you guys a feel for who's my opponent, but if I'm being honest, there's only one way to describe this guy. With all due respect, this player might actually be the worst player that I've ever played against in my entire life. I mean, this guy is the king fish. He's the head honcho of all the other fish in the aquarium. I hope he doesn't watch my vlogs, but he's actually terrible, guys. And if I taught my baby sister how to play poker for five minutes, then she would print money against this guy. Okay, so now that you guys hopefully have a visual of who I'm heads up with, let's get back to the hand. So on this turn against this particular player, I think I have no choice but to bet the turn and the river and just pray he doesn't wake up with an eight because this player never folds regardless. Hopefully, top pair is good, but there's no point in trying to put him on a hand. I mean, he could have aces, he could have seven deuce. Hell, his cards could actually be blank. They might as well be. So I put out a bet of $85 on his turn card. He, of course, makes the call. But ladies and gentlemen, look how he made the call. 
I mean, anytime you know a player is going to put out a call like this, run to that game and put your whole net worth on the table. But he makes the sideways call. Now let's go to a rip. In this spot against this player, I know I have to bet. I'm just taking this time to pray that this man did not wake up with an eight. I eventually bet $200 because it's just too often that he's going to have absolutely nothing here. So if he wakes up with a hand better than mine, then here, he can have this $200. Oh. I got a cool. cool. He again makes the sideways call, and what did he show? Some random hand, just like I told you guys. Look, I moved my body to the right side of the screen, just so you guys can see these infamous sideways calls from the head honcho. And hey, Valdez, do not laugh. I see that smirk on your face. Remain professional. Here I am trying not to laugh and my boy Lester is over there across the table giggling because he knows I just committed armed robbery. I mean, when this guy sits at the table, he might as well just pull his wallet out and divide his money amongst the table nine ways. But hey, he comes and drinks and he has a good time. So who am I to judge? I don't even have to do promo at this point. I mean, you guys saw that last hand. Come play with us here at the hangar, or as I like to call it, the aquarium. And use my promo code Valdez for a free daily membership and a hundred dollar time match. I look forward to playing with you guys soon. Okay, next hand. Five six. Are we gonna bump up? No, no, no. Pocket aces in the low jack, and we're still sitting pretty, still up a couple hundred from that Christmas gift from earlier. Let's see if we can build on that momentum with the best starting hand in poker. The $6 straddle is limp to under the gun plus two, and he raises it up to $25. And with aces, this is an easy raise, so I bump it up just a little bit to $80. This player is yet another wild card, so I wanna keep all of his random hands from folding. He's the only caller and we go heads up to a flop. Heads up. The flop comes king, six, four, with two diamonds. And when he checks to me, this is a mandatory C bet here with aces. I decide to bet small to keep whatever random hands that he could be raising with preflop in the hand. Hands like jack, ten of spades, queen, jack of clubs, hands like that that totally miss, or even smaller pocket pairs. So I decide to put out a bet of $35. He makes the call, and we go heads up to a turn. The turn is the deuce of diamonds. And when he checks it over to me with an over pair along with the nut flush draw, I decide to bet again. This time, I size up to $105. Let's see what happens. I'm on it. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Fuck. All right, guys, call or fold. While my face is stuck, put what you would do in this spot in the comment section. He's all in for $550 effective. The player type is wild card, capable of raising with anything and capable of having anything. What would you do in this spot? Put it in the comment section. Holy shit. Holy shit. Ooh. God damn, I think I can fold this hand. Oh my god. No way I can fold this hand. You pulled in the 105? Yeah. God 
Damn it. This is some sick shit, bro. God, I don't think I can fold this thing. What are you shoving with? Four, four, five is the button. <laughs> I don't even know if I should be tanking here, but you raise pre-flop, $25. I raise you, you snap, you shove on a fucking diamond? What are you shoving with? Fuck, man, this is part of the game, man. For what? Four forty-five. God damn it. Oh my God, bro, are you kidding me, bro? What are you shoving with? What the fuck is he shoving with? For what? 445. I mean, what could he possibly be shoving with? I'm gonna give exact, man. Right. Okay. <laughs> Damn. <Yeah. laughs> Call. Get my money, bro. That bill's about to be on the wheel off. Flush. Shower. 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 Yeah. Flush. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I can't fold that. No. Yeah. 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 Are you good on the drink bottle? Huh? Are you good on the drink bottle? Yeah, I can handle it. That's the only thing, I mean, you're yeah. That's the only thing. Uh, five? 25? 80. Well, uh, what's the most I can do? 80. Three five? Yeah, I think we need to count here. Yeah. Can you use green chips? Are you wanting a massive big stack? Yeah. Are you okay. raised 25? That's, that's you verbal is good. Okay. Yeah. Um, just have that right there. All right. Maybe at 85. So as you all saw, poker sucks. I don't even know why anyone plays this sick game. But no, in all seriousness, I pay that player off 100 out of 100 times in that spot. As you guys saw, he snapped raised preflop in early position with 10-8 of diamonds. And he's definitely capable of shoving with worse hands than mine. Hands like king-queen with the king or queen being a diamond. So even though I'm not fine with the results in this hand, I'm perfectly fine with how I played it. Alright, next hand. Quick hand with my good friend Carl when we look down at pocket nines. Now, I know some of you guys remember Carl from my second vlog ever when he complained about a $5 suck out. Yes, it's that Carl. But in this hand, we raise it up to $15. And when it gets to him, he shoves the rest of his chips all in for $97. Let's see what happens. Whenever you put hand on I don't want Bill in next to it. I want Carl. <laughs> you better not be nutty because I'm pretty light. How much is it? 97. Yeah. I like you, man. I tell you, I'm, it's, a, it's a pretty hand, but it's not one that I do. Uh, I got 19 shooters. What? 19 shooters. All I'm saying is you got to wait Do I have a diamond? Oh, I do have a diamond. What the fuck? It's a, it's a, it's a pretty hand. Nine, ten, bro, and you get there with the ten. You got there with runner, runner, diamonds. I was ahead. I didn't have to get there. You were not ahead after the flop. I was ahead no, pre-flop. Bye, Carl. So I put your name on there. You said put your name on there. All right. Good night, Carl. Have a good night, Carl. Yeah, you sucked out on the flop. <laughs> Carl was one of the very first supporters of my silly vlog. This is a sincere thank you to Carl and to anyone else who watches my videos. Thank you all so much.
six four spades in the low jack, and there's a raise to fifteen dollars in middle position. I make the call along with two other players, and then the big blind bumps it up to sixty dollars. UTG makes the call, middle position folds, and when it gets to me, I make the questionable call in the low jack for sixty dollars. The hijack and the small blind call as well, and we go five ways to a flop. The flop comes ace, five, eight, all spades. So we flop the flush. The small blind leaves for $100. The big blind calls. And when it gets back to me in this spot, my hand is going to be best here more times than not. And it really can only get worse from here. So I decided to raise right away to $395. I want to give all higher flush draws a bad price to draw to their flushes. The small blind is the only caller, and we go heads up to a turn. So the turn is the five of hearts, which pairs the board, and my opponent immediately rips the rest of his chips in for $445. Let's hear what I'm thinking. <sighs> I know I'm beat now. I don't know if that board, I don't know if that cost you money or not. Alright, we got $445? Yeah. I don't know if that costs you money or not, but I'm definitely gonna fold now. Don't pair the board. Oh. Probably was already beat though. Man. I probably lost the minimum. Well, I would have lost the minimum if I just called. Four, uh, four, 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 forty-five. I probably was already beat. Probably saved me money. I do have a fucking. I have one out. I have one out. Alright. Hold. Hold. Last hand, though. So I end up folding, and my opponent later said that he had a seven off with the seven of spades. And I'm not gonna lie, this one hurts. But hey, I gave my opponent more credit than I should have. I'm not expecting him to shove there with an ace and a seven high flush draw. So I level myself into a fold. Hindsight, I should probably call off all non-spade turn cards because I already raised $395 on the flop. And that's the thing. I knew where I was at on the flop. I just let a bad shove by another player level myself into a fold. But hey, it happens. Nobody under the sound of my voice is a perfect poker player. So I'll take this lesson in stride. Let's hear what I had to say outside right after the hand. Okay, so nothing exciting was really happening until that 6 4 spades hand. And this one hurts, man, because I can't always get it right. Sometimes I give people more credit than I should for basically on how good, how how they play the hand. The player said he had an ace with a 7 of spades. I don't think that's a shove there. I know that's not a shove there. So when he shoves into me, I put him on a set that turned the boat, or I put him on bigger spades than me because he could easily have bigger spades. So I made the... I'm, I'm, that's kind of a tight fold. I mean, what is he shoving there with? He said he had the ace, an ace with a seven of spades. I don't think that's the worst fold. I mean, you call six four of spades, you flop the flush. I don't think that's the worst fold. I probably should have called off. I probably, but I don't think he jammed there with ace, with an ace 
seven off, you know, with a, with a seven high spade draw. I probably should have called off. I should have closed my eyes and called, but I put him on higher spade when he let out a hundred on the flop. You lead out a hundred on the flop with a with a weak ace, with three spades out there. You only had a seven of spades in here. It just didn't make sense. So that fold was probably a mistake with that player. But like I said, I gave him too much credit. But hey, in poker, you can't always get it right. This is this is why I'm glad I have you guys because that would be a probably hand I beat myself up on about because because I don't play the hand right, so I, I'm down on myself or I might be tilted or something like that. But I'm able to talk to you guys and talk through the hand. And in poker, you're not gonna get every hand right. I'm not Superman, I'm not superhuman. I probably made a, a too tight of a fold. I probably should have called off, but I don't think he shoves there with A7 off. But hey, we're going back in, we're gonna top off. I think we are we have about 700 in our stack. We're probably down about 600 bucks. So let's see how the rest of the night goes, but I'm not gonna let that hand get me down. Let's go. <laughs> He's here, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. Yeah. He's here, ladies and gentlemen. I want to be on the block. He's only asked a hundred times. Pop. He's here. <laughs> we look down at Ace King of Spades in the hijack, and there's been a raise to $30 in early position with two callers. We bump it up to $150 with our Ace King. Only the initial razor makes the call, and we go heads up to a flop. Rack them up, rack them in. Me begin. I don't come to battle, I come to win. Okay. And then, why y'all keep voice texting my fucking gun right now? All right. The flop comes 9 8 3 rainbow. And when it's checked to me, we C bet for $75. He folds, and we take this small pot down. That's your face, Carl. Please, please, of course. Hey, great hand, Bob. Thank you. Uh huh. Thank you. Ah, shit. Thank you. All right, Charlotte. Have a fun Charlotte. Three. Don't ruin it for the vlog. No, don't ruin it for the vlog, God is. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> so gay, bro. In the next hand, we have a $6 straddle on the button. And when it's limp to me, we go ahead and decide to ruin it for the vlog, as drunk Jared would like to say, and raise it up to $40. Two players make the call, and we go three ways to a flop. So anti-climatic. Terrible content. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, man. I mean, what in the fuck? Are you going to hit him? Terrible content. Because he folded. <laughs> <laughs> That's so silly. The flop comes jack 6-4 with two spades. So we flop top top. And when it's checked to me, I decide to bet $90 on this flop. Nabil is the only caller in middle position, and we go heads up to the turn. Make it home safe, babe. Bye, Jared. <laughs> the turn is the eight of spades, and when he checks it over to me, I decide to check back my top pair in this spot. A lot of the combinations of hands he calls me with on the flop contain a flush draw, so I decide to pot control the turn here with my top pair. Now let's see a river. Somehow I won. I mean, it doesn't make sense, but I'm not doing it. Wow. Your flush is good. <laughs> no flush. No flush. Only because of the jack. No flush. I think I gotta get that. Oh, I made it. That's so weird. I had ace three. <laughs> there you go, Spades. You made it, bro. I'll put that in just for you. So we go ahead and pay off Nabil's nut flush when we hit trip jacks on the river. Hey guys, I have a serious question. Why do we do that thing where we call off even though we know we're about to lose? Well, hey, at least I knew where I was at. Let's get to this last hand of the day. And this, my friends, was by far the biggest part of the night. Let's get to it. Okay, so before we get into the last hand of the night, 
I have to give you guys some quick context for the title of this video. Look, I'm a very easygoing, playful, fun-loving person. I don't want any problems with anyone. But if you talk shit to me at the poker table, I don't care who you are. I gotta talk that shit right back to you. I am contractually obligated by me being myself to give anyone the same energy that they give me. So to make a long story short, one day I was playing poker with this lady and she said something smart to me. Nothing crazy, just kind of like a smart remark. Well, I said something smart right back and she didn't like it. So the remarks started to get less and less playful. And so did my remarks. And ever since then, she's made up in her mind that she doesn't like me. So she comes up to the poker table on this day and as soon as she sits down, she says that I can't record. She says she didn't want her hands in my videos or her voice either. And guys, she only said this because she doesn't like me. Well, anyway, the floor ruled that they run a private business and they said that I could still film if I wanted to. And we later talked about the remarks that were said and squashed the beef. So no, she's no longer my quote unquote worst enemy. But hey, that was a good title for the video, huh guys? All right, let's get back to poker. Uh, Monday. Probably smoke then. Huh? No, yeah, yeah, no, no smoking. Yeah, we'll be smoking. Uh, we looked down at pocket tens under the gun and we raised it up to $15. Our friend who we were just referring to makes the call and then the small blind goes all in for his remaining $73. Now, when he goes all in, I know that this reopens the action. And the player to my left is no stranger. I've been playing poker with her since early 2018, and I'm very familiar with her game. She's a super aggressive player. And in this spot, in real time, I'm expecting a squeeze from her with whatever two cards that she may have. But little did she know that I have pocket tens, and pocket tens are miles ahead of her limp squeezing range. So my plan is that as soon as she squeezes with her ace four offsuit or pocket deuces or whatever the hell she may have, I'm ripping my entire stack in and letting the variance do the rest. Now look, I would not lie to you guys. This is exactly what I was thinking in the moment. Now let's see how this plays out. It's the condom on me. I'm all in. Thank you. Ooh. Next. Let's go. Jacks? No, 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 no. How the fuck does she have jacks here? There's no way. She's three betting me with Jax preflop 10 times out of 10. How is this even possible? And if you don't believe me on the type of player she is, just look at how fast she just snapped me off with Jax for over $1,300. Hell, you guys just saw me in that same exact spot with Jax last week and I tanked for almost two minutes before I called. And she just snapped me off for over $1,300 in less than two milliseconds. Oh boy. I'm so screwed. You know what? I can still wiggle my way out of this. The poker gods understand that I rarely get it in bad like this. So surely they'll grant me a 10, right? I mean, come on. One time? I mean, have I used my real one time for the year already? I don't think I have, so I'll just go ahead and use that now. I think I'll be fine, though. Surely the poker gods wouldn't force me to have to eat ramen noodles for a week straight if I lose this hand, right? Nah, they wouldn't do me like that. Okay, we'll be fine. Let's see a run out. I just want to call Making a vlog too. <laughs> you mean Jack? Yeah, you don't need it. It's massive. <laughs> <laughs> so Give me some chips. Yeah. Y'all got this. So I got stacked, and in hindsight, I deserved it for how hard I was chewing that gum on camera. My apologies for that, guys. I'm still getting used to being on camera, but um, yeah. Call me Valdez the Magician because I just magically turned $1,400 into dust. 
I bought back in for eighteen hundred dollars, but nothing interesting happened, so I left around an hour and a half after this hen. Let's cash out and see how much money we made. Got some explaining to do tonight. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain this shit. See, what had happened was... <laughs> <laughs> this sucks, bro. Fuck, I'm explaining this shit. Can't even talk my way out of this shit, bro. My, my excuse is, y'all ain't never played with her before. 16, 17, 17, 22. <laughs> See, what had happened was... Well... And just like that, in for $3,800, out for $1,722. So we lost this amount. Damn! Tonight was really based off of three hands. The aces hands, I'm happy with how I played that hand. He get paid off every time. The 6-4 spades hand, that's supposed to be a call if, if the turn. If the turn's not a spade, I'm supposed to call that because why would I raise the flop if I don't? Call the turn, even though the board paired, I gotta pay him off when he turned out to have a seven off. And then the last hand, which was the um oh, ten uh tens versus jack. So on that hand, I think I played the player too much. I I'm I it's, it's an easy fold. I'm only in for sixty-five dollars. But you know, not playing with the rent money, give us and it takes us away. As y'all saw on the last on the last episode, I was the hero because I hero called there. And this episode I'm the opposite of the hero because I called there. I think in that spot, you just eat the $65 and you call it a day. In hindsight, it's really no excuse for that. I should I should fold there, I should eat the $65. But instead I snapped off, I don't even know the number guys. I snapped that shit off too, that was so like impulsive. I don't even know why I snapped it off. But like I said, I've been playing with that player since 2018, maybe 2017 and um, I thought it was an isolation play. I thought it was an isolation play. I thought she was trying to make a move. Even if she was trying to make a move, I'm still supposed to fold. There's no excuse. As y'all can see early in the video, we buried the hatchet. I'm glad because look, guys, I don't have no problem with nobody. I don't want no problems with nobody. I'm a person that, that loves to love everybody. Like I don't want nobody to dislike me. I don't want to dislike nobody. You know, I don't want to walk in somewhere and be like, oh, that person's here. That person doesn't like me. So now I got to act like I don't like that person. Like, no, I wish we lived in a world where nobody had any problems with anybody. But that's not the world we live in. But I'm glad that we was able to bury that hatchet before she stacked me. Because I'll be honest, guys. If we hadn't buried that hatchet and then she stacked me and I don't like her and she stacked me, that would have made it sting a lot worse. I ain't going to lie. That would have made it sting a lot worse. But look. We put our big boy pants on and we still finished the session. Still finished the session. Um, but like I said, when you're a high variance player, three hands can really make a whole session. Ace's hand, I'm cool with how that hand went. Six four hand, I supposed to call off. I folded. I gave him too much credit. And then the last hand with tens versus jacks, that's a fold. That is a fold 100%. But like I said, I'm showing y'all the ups and downs in poker. Um, we can't beat it. It's over. It's over with. We can't beat it. I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I'm proud of myself of how much I've grown in, in poker. I normally would tilt off something like that. We're going to keep it pushing. This is proof that I show y'all the good and the bad. And I think I'm tilt proof. I think I'm tilt proof. I might be turning into a robot. That's good news. Even though the outcome wasn't like I wanted it, I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. Please subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content. Share with a friend if you like the type of content. Until next time, I'll see you on the next vlog. All right, y'all take care. Just fold! <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Just fold.
Just fall, swallow your pride and fall.